last thing vehicle pulled up in close proximity, if I remember correctly, it was probably a foot, foot and a half away when we pulled up. Foot, foot and a half away when we pulled up. Their car was approximately two or three feet ahead of Shook's car. Two or three feet ahead of Shook's car. The suspect, as the vehicle pulled up, the driver's arm came out point blank. They were stopped right here. The car was stopped. The suspect vehicle pulls up alongside. Suspect vehicle pulls up ahead of BMW, which is stopped, also blocked in by a car. He let a gun out the window right here at an angle. We're right here pulling right up. Boom, boom, boom. Nowhere for him to go. So angle of impact, height of the shooter, and distance of the shooter from the wall are the three important measurements that we're always gonna be talking about. If we have the angle of impact and we have some kind of footprints, we can perhaps determine the height of the shooter. So the angle of impact of a bullet that's fired straight into a wall is 90 degrees. Because if we have our wall here and we have our gun here and the bullet goes straight into the wall, then we have a 90 degree angle right here. So the angle of impact is 90 degrees and the hole in the wall is going to be perfectly circular. So we're going to have an absolutely perfect circle if that angle of impact is 90 degrees. Because the hole will help determine the caliber of the gun and the type of gun that we're looking for. Remember that the caliber of the gun tells us how big the bullet is in diameter and how big the gun barrel is in diameter. If the angle is off by even the teensiest, tinesiest bit, the hole in the wall is going to be elliptical. So we're gonna get some that are big ellipses and some that are smaller ellipses, depending on the angle of impact. As soon as you are putting that dowel rod into the hole, you could be destroying evidence. We have very circular entrance holes here, here, and here. These shots are coming pretty straight on, perpendicular to that surface. Straight on, perpendicular to that surface. At a crime scene, we measure out the specific location of each bullet hole entry and ballistic impact mark. So on the car door, we can see that bullets are coming from a couple different directions. Understanding directionality is one of the keys to figuring out what happened and how it happened. What I see is the parabolic shape of the bullet as it first comes in contact with the surface. And I know it's traveling from left to right because of that U-shape. Since it's traveling from left to right, it becomes asymmetrical. So that bullet is being deformed as it's moving along the surface, creating this asymmetrical damage. So we can tell these are all entrances because the way the metal is deforming in the direction of the bullet. What I'm looking at is the point that the bullet strikes the surface first and creates a shoulder that goes into the car door. We have an area of preserved paint right at the edge here. So that's called a pinch point. Let's do the math. A white Cadillac pulls up at a distance of 12 inches from the passenger side of Shug's BMW. Someone from the Cadillac shoots a bullet through the BMW passenger door with a 90 degree angle of impact. The height of that bullet hole on the BMW door is 26 inches from the ground. The height at the base of the window of the Cadillac is 37.73 inches from the ground. Is this angle of impact possible based on the height of the window and distance between the cars? Using basic trigonometry and witness testimony to establish distance between the cars, we can prove some shots on the door with 90 degrees straight on angles of impact could not have been fired out of a window. Because those 90 degree shots were fired perpendicular, they must have been fired at the same height they entered the BMW door. Radial fractures are lines that radiate out from the origin of impact. They begin on the opposite side of the force and they're the first fracture to show up. And concentric fractures are lines that are circular around the point of impact. They're on the same side as the force and they're the second fracture to show up. A fracture always terminates or stops at an already existing line and that's how you can tell which one of these came first. That shot A came first before shot B. And here's how we can tell. Right here is a radial fracture that's going out. It goes, 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 goes. And then B happens and its radial fracture goes, 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 and it stops right there. Which means A's was there before B was shot. So A was the first shot, B was the second shot. So there's two points, one's right here and one's right here that both show that this was the first shot and this was the second shot over here because a fracture always terminates where there's already an existing line of fracture there. I've already created that hole through the glass. Now my bullets are going clean. I've already created that hole through the glass. Now my bullets are going clean. But after that first shot, unless the guy has moved and you've got virgin glass, you need to immediately come back to shooting center again. I, I want that to sink and it really does matter. As that bullet goes through, it catches those breaking angles in the glass and your bullet, that first bullet is going to go high. 
so you need to aim low. However, what, uh, and that's fine, they teach that. They teach that. They teach that. But the other thing you need to think about is the, the, the curve of the windshield, right? Because uh, the bullet will, uh, is gonna angle with the shear lines in the glass, right? So uh, I've already created that hole through the glass. Now my bullets are going clean. I've shot at a lot of targets through glass probably thousands of times. The only thing you can guarantee about shooting through glass in a vehicle is you can't guarantee anything. So I hope you understand that. The only thing you can guarantee is nothing, all right? And you don't know what's going to happen. You also have contours in the glass, so it's not just flat across the side. It actually contours to the sides and up a little bit. So as it contours to the sides, that pulls it in different directions as well. The windshield has an angle to it. The sportier, the lower the car, typically the more exaggerated the angle of the windshield is. Why am I talking about angles? Because it's all about angles when you're shooting through windshields. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. Every time you tell me something, I figure that you're lying. Ooh, it's almost like you're faking. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know you're lying, but you sound excited, and you know that I know that you're lying. Oh, girl. Hi, Sway. Take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. Got he. Got he.